Constructors are an essential part of objects in Java. But before we talk about really what they do, let's talk about how we recognize them inside of a class. So I've created two classes, Constructors 101 and Constructors 101 Runner. And so we're going to create a constructor in the Constructors 101 class. In the middle here, I have defined how we should create a constructor. It should one, have the same name as the class, and two, it should not have a return type. So it would look something like this, public constructors 101. And let's check our criteria to make sure that we have both of the enumerated points taken care of. And so the first point is same name as the class, public class constructors 101, public constructors 101, yes. Let's check the second part, no return type. And the return type would go there where the red box is located. You'll see on the constructor, there is no return type right here, but on our output values, there is a return type. So constructors are pretty easy to identify. They'll always have the same name as the class and they will neither be void nor non-void, meaning they won't have a return type. Now that we understand how to recognize constructors, Let's talk about why have constructors in the first place. Their purpose is to get objects of a class ready for use. Anything that an object needs to get ready to be used by a class is going to happen inside of the constructor. And that's really going to happen in two ways. It's going to initialize variables, which we're going to spend most of our time on, and it's going to call methods, which we will address. So first, let's look at initializing variables. What variables are we going to initialize? Our instance variables, num1 and num2. So we have num1 assigned to 10 and num2 assigned to 20. So let's see how this would work with our constructors 101 runner. In order to use the constructors 101 class, we're going to have to create an object of that class. And so I say constructors 101 con equals new constructors 101. And now I would like to call the method. But in all reality, I've actually already called the method. Hopefully, this is a little bit familiar to you. When you construct an object, it has different parts. First is the name of the class, highlighted in green there. Second, you have the object name or the object reference, and its name is con equals or assigned to new, which allocates memory, and then we get to the constructor, which we've kind of glossed over up to this point. But now we're going to focus like a laser beam in this video on the topic of the constructor. But I want you to notice what goes hand in hand. When an object is created, the constructor is called. You can't have an object without the constructor. Because again, the purpose of a constructor is to get that object ready for use. Now that we know that the constructor is being called, let's call the method output values. So we use the object name, which is con, and then the method output values. So we know that the constructor works because when we call the method output values, we don't see num1 and num2 equaling zero, we see them equaling 10 and 20. So that's really the first purpose of a constructor, to initialize variables, usually the instance variables. The second purpose is to call methods. Well, what type of methods would we want to call? Well, let me give you an example. Let's say that we are writing a program about a card deck. In almost any card game that you're going to play, what is something that you would want to do before the game starts? And that is shuffle the deck. So you can see inside of my constructor here, I've added the method shuffle deck. And I haven't shown you the implementation but this would be a valid reason to call a method inside of a constructor. Another example would be display menu. Let's say that you're creating a game and the first thing that you wanted to show was a menu that said something like load game, save game, new game, etc. You would want that to be the first thing that happened. So when that game object was created, you would want the menu to appear. And that would be a valid use of a method inside of a constructor. So now that we've talked about the major purposes of a constructor, let's talk about some flexibility that can be added into constructors. I want you to notice that I've assigned num1 and num2 to 10 and 20. 
But what we can do is we can allow the user to set those values or another class to set those values instead of having the constructors 101 class do it. And we do that through parameter variables. And right now, the parameter values are not being set to num1 and num2, but we can easily change that by saying num1 equals n1 and num2 equals n2. So now we can pass in values that are going to set the instance variables num1 and num2. We've changed it over here inside of the constructors 101 class. So now let's go over to the runner class and change it so we can take in those values. And we would make the change inside of the constructor here, and we're going to put the values 10 and 20. When this object is created, 10 and 20 are being passed over here to the constructors 101 constructor, and they're being assigned to num1 and num2. So when we get the output, it would be 10 and 20, just like we would expect. So now that we've seen some built-in flexibility, let's talk about some common mistakes or pitfalls that programmers make with constructors. The first one that I want to talk about is probably the most insidious, and that is initializing variables inside of the constructor with the same name as the instance variables. Why is this wrong? Why is this frustrating? Because what you're doing is you're creating a second set of variables that are different from the instance variables. You're creating local variables, which is a bad thing because the scope then of these two variables is limited to the constructor of the constructors 101 class. And the scope would look something like this. These variables are only created inside of the constructor and cannot communicate to anything outside of that particular constructor. They don't have the correct scope. So if we were to run this program right now, we would get num1 is 0 and num2 is 0 because these are not the same variables as these. Even though they have the same name, these are local, these are instant. So instance variables would go with their default value of 0, and these variables just inside of this constructor would have the values of 10 and 20. Not at all what we want. Now that we've shown you that mistake, let's show you another common mistake and that is naming the parameter variables the same name as the instance variables. And you see right here, I've called this num1 and this num2. So we would have some kind of statement right here that says num1 equals num1 and num2 equals num2. And if we were to run the program right now, we would get zero and zero. So we can obviously see that these variables right here are not communicating with these variables up here. And the reason is, is because these parameter variables are just assigning the value of themselves to themselves, and they're never communicating up here. There is a way around this, and that is to add the keyword this in front of these two variables. And what this does is it references the instance variables as opposed to referencing these two parameter variables and therefore we would get the correct values of 10 and 20. You might come across this inside of a future program, so you should be aware of this method, but the far more common method to stay away from this issue is to simply name your parameter variables something different from the instance variables, just like we've been doing. Instead of calling them num1, we call them n1 and n2. So I've shown you two of the most common constructor errors. They're somewhat insidious because they will not be picked up by the compiler. You'll just have to run the program and see that you get a logical error. Now that we understand the common errors, let's go back to the flexibility of constructors. And let's talk about all the possibilities of the constructors 101 class. What do I mean by that? I have two variables. How many different constructors could I create with two variables? The answer would be four. So let's walk through each possible scenario and see the different constructors that we could create. So the first one would be num1 and num2 are defined by the class. And we've seen this constructor before in that the class is assigning the values 10 and 20 to num1 and num2. What would the second option be? We could have num1 defined by the user or some other class and num2 defined by constructors 101 or the current class. And so that would look something like this, public constructors 101, int n1. 
And so you can see here, num1 is being assigned to n1 from the parameter variable, and n2 is just being assigned by the class. The third option would be similar to the second option, but instead of saying public constructors 101 int n1, I'm saying n2, num2 would be assigned here, and num1 would just be assigned by the class. And the final possibility would be num1 and num2 defined by the user. This last option would be taking in two values, assigning them to num1 and num2, and let the user or some other class decide what are the values of the constructor going to be. These are great possibilities, but there is a problem here, and it's not obvious. Three of the four are going to be valid constructors, and by themselves, they would all be valid constructors. But having the two constructors together in the same program like this would cause errors. And let me tell you why. It's because these two have the exact same signature. And an important note about constructors is constructors cannot have the same method signature. They cannot have the same method name and the same parameter list. So we see here we have int n1, int n2. Names do not matter. It matters that this is the same data type as this for both constructors. If you tried to do this in Java, it would throw an error saying something like duplicate methods or duplicate identifiers and you cannot have that inside of Java. But the good news is that we can have three of the four inside of a program at the same time. And so let's see how that would work in code. We've gone back to our Constructors 101 class and our Constructors 101 runner. So I'm going to run through this program and we're going to see how we can utilize three of the four constructors. So we're going to start with the main method, go into the code and use the first constructor, which is going to set num1 and num2 to the values of 10 and 20. Once that's done, we would go back to the main method and print a label saying constructor1. Then we're going to use the method of the class called output values to simply print out num1 and num2, and we get 10 and 20. Now we're going to use the next constructor, which is the second constructor in our list, it's going to allow us to take in one value. I could have used either one of the two from the previous example where I set the first value or I set the second value. I just chose to use the first one, which allows me to set the first value. So I'm going to set the first value via the constructor parameter, and then the second one is going to be assigned by the class, and num2 would be 40. So we're going to put another label indicating, hey, we're using the second constructor, and then print out the values, which are 30 and 40. Now we're going to create a third object of the Constructors 101 class. We're going to utilize the toParameter constructor, which is going to take in two parameters and allow the other class to set the values of num1 and num2. So we do that with the values 50, 60. Then we print the third label. And then, just like we've done with the other two, we would print out the values. It would say, Constructor number three, num1 is 50, num2 is 60. What we have just done with constructors is extremely powerful with objects. We can create three distinct objects that are using the Constructors 101 class, but yet they're all set up differently. And depending on how num1 and num2 behave in the class could give us completely different results for each one of the particular objects. So hopefully we can see how constructors bring many forms to objects and how they set up objects to be ready for use inside of a program. Summing it up, constructors will have the same name as the class and they will have no return type. They're easy to identify because of these two characteristics. Secondly, they're called during the instantiation of an object. Whenever you have an object instantiated, you must have the constructor along with it. They go hand in hand. Why have constructors in the first place? They're getting the objects to be ready for use inside of a particular class. And you can do that through both variables, and you can also do that through methods like shuffle deck or display menu. One of the most common mistakes with constructors is initializing instance variables in a constructor as local variables. 
be careful not to do this because those variables inside of your constructor will be local and you will not be setting the instance variables for the entire class and it will produce frustrating results. The second common mistake is naming the instance variables and the parameter variables the exact same thing. So if you call your parameter values num1 and num2, don't call your instance variables num1 and num2. You can get around that by using the keyword this, but it's far more common just to have two separate names for both types of variables. And then lastly, constructors can take on many forms. And so this adds a great level of flexibility to our program. As you saw, we can have a constructor set all the instance variables. We could have one set by an outside source and one set by the constructor, or we can have all the variables set by another class or another user. In doing multiple constructors, you can have as many as you want, but do not have the same signature meaning they cannot have the same name and the same parameter list. Java will not like this and will not run. Constructors are essential for objects because they set up what objects are going to be when you start using them. Understanding how constructors are initialized and how to get data to them is essential for object-oriented programming. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you like videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.